blessings and peace be with you this day as we gather. Hello to all of you joining us on YouTube or a TV broadcast sometime later in the week. Um, know that God's peace and God's grace meets you where you are. So, welcome. Uh, before we get into the rest of the service, um, in our prayers, you will hear that we're praying for Tom Griffiths. He had a fall and is hospitalized still. Um, so, please keep Tom and Karen in, uh, in, in your prayers as he recovers from that fall and as they try to make sure that everything's good to go as they get him um, back up and moving. Our order of service can be found in your bulletin. If you didn't get one, they're on the back table there. And I invite you to stand as you are able. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are gathered to worship in the name of God, our Creator, our Redeemer, and our Sanctifier. Amen. Amen. Gathered in God's name, we are connected. And so at this time, I invite you to move around the space, um, greet people with God's peace, and welcome them into this time of worship. Welcome. Good morning. God's peace. Thank you for leading worship today, you too. God's peace, elbow bumps. Our service continues by stating why we are here. We gather today in the light of Christ to offer our praise, our hopes, and our thanks. To be connected to you, O Lord, and to one another. We are here to offer thanks. Gracious God, you have touched us and blessed us this past week in so many ways. We thank you. We are here to confess our need for God. Gracious God, you call us to grow in spirit and love, to serve your world. Help us be aware of your world's condition and offer hope. Help us to see our own brokenness and as your people, attend to our neighbor. We are here to experience God's presence as part of community. Gracious God, you created us to be in community. There is joy and support as we gather. We see you in our neighbor's eyes. Our Lord is an amazing God who knows the joys, the struggles of our lives. God claims us, leads us, and blesses us in our journeys to bless our neighbors. Rise, shine, for your light has come. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing our gathering song.
Let's pray together. Lord God, your loving kindness always goes before us and follows after us. Summon Summon us us into into your your light and and direct direct our steps in the ways of of goodness goodness that that come come through as we follow follow your Son, Jesus Christ, our our Savior and Lord. Lord. Amen. Please read responsibly with me in the bold print. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I asked of the Lord that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart seeks his face. Your face, Lord, do I see. In the New Testament lesson from 1 Corinthians, 1st chapter, 10 through 18. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. Please stand.
The good news for today is recorded in St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region in shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And as he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called to them. And immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The good news. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. As the children come forward, we sing This Big Light of Mine. by me. Come stand by me. Come on. Up here. Up here. Okay. So I'm going to get a little in front of you. Put your arms out like this and get far away from each other. Okay. Why are you what? Is that what it is? It's called what? Teep. Oh, okay. So if you want to follow me or Jesus, now, Jesus isn't telling you to do this, but if you want to follow me, if you want to be a follower, you have to learn what I'm doing, okay? So the first thing I'm doing is this. The next thing I'm doing is this. Out. Back. Okay. Do you got it? Let me see it. Out. Okay, now we're going to go down here, and you're going to get behind me. Okay? And again, you're following, so that means you have to learn from me, okay? So somebody has to get behind me. Okay, so we're going to do that move twice. We're going to take two steps forward and hop. Okay. One, two, Hop. Okay, should we try it one more time? Okay. One, two, hop. Okay, so you're learning from me. Have you learned? Kind of. Okay, so if you're learning from me, now I'm going to, ha I'm going to send you out and you're going to teach other people how to do it. Do you want to do it with me one more time? Okay, why don't you come up in front of me, and we're going to follow you. Now, you do exactly what I did, okay? Okay. Okay. You 
know what Jesus' followers did? They listened to him so they could do exactly the same thing. Did you know that? They listened to every word that he said so they could share it. They saw how he healed so they could heal. That's what a disciple does. They follow and they learn. So now, let's see if you can teach somebody. Who's a good person to teach? Nope, she's saying no. She doesn't want to be a disciple. Okay, raise your hand if they can teach you. Anybody, raise your hand. <gasps> Look at right there or right there. Let's see if he can do it. Okay. Okay. Okay, you almost got it, but you know what? The disciples never got it right. They kind of got it, so you did a good job. You were perfect. You were an exact disciple. So do you think we can teach the pastor? Yeah, who wants to teach him? Now remember, it's this, this, two steps, and then a hop. Okay, who wants to teach him? Okay, get in front of him. You have your first student. Good job. So, come on up here. So Jesus called the disciples, and they followed, and they learned what he did. Now, do you think he made them go like this? No. no. Do you think they learned how to do this? No. Yeah, come here. Yeah. yeah. They didn't do the action. What did they learn to do from Jesus? No. Well, maybe. Do you think maybe they were on the road sometimes 30 miles a day? Do you think they hopped once in a while because they were bored? Maybe. So what did they learn from Jesus to do? Follow. Anybody out there, what did they learn from Jesus to do? Follow and heal and love and teach, pray. So what do you do when you pray? No, you don't. You can say a prayer anytime, anywhere. So have you ever taught anybody anything? Gordon, did you ever teach Tucker to do something? What did you teach him? Did you teach him how to make his bed? Did you teach him how to put his toys away? Did you teach him how to give a hug? No. I think you did. Huh? You taught him to what? Stand up. Okay, let's see it. Stand up and... Yay! Good job. So we teach, we heal, we learn, we pray, we follow. And let's pray together. Come on over here. And again, we're teaching, so we're saying it, you're saying it after me, and think about the words. Grab hands. Okay. Grab hands. Okay, it's important to be community. Are you community? Okay, they're learning. Are you community? Okay, all right. Then I'm going to teach you to pray. Dear God, we thank you for today. You are our Lord. We follow you. We learn from you. And then we go out into the world. And we do what you've taught us. Amen. Okay, good job. I'm sure they could have learned something much more in depth as a step, but in heels, I'm not going to do a line dance. Um, have you ever thought about what it means to be a disciple? That a disciple actually is there to absorb absolutely everything that the teacher has to share? 
and for it to make a difference in their lives. So, in today's gospel lesson, there's a whole lot. There's a whole lot in the lesson. John the Baptist has just been arrested. So there is no prophet for God, not anymore. And all of a sudden, Jesus begins his ministry. Now last week, we had Peter and Andrew and Nathaniel and other people following and wanting to know who Jesus was and searching him out. But this week, we have Jesus actually calling disciples. How many of you know that you don't call disciples? You don't choose them? At the time of Jesus, rabbis had disciples that they taught, but the disciples came to them. The disciples came to them for a trial period, and then after the trial period, the rabbi would say, well, I think you're going to be committed, and that you're going to be committed, and you're going to be a good student, and you can follow me, and I'm sending the rest of you home. But the disciples came to the rabbi. The disciples recognized right away what the rabbi had to give. But Jesus is doing something different. Jesus actually went out and said, Will you follow me? Will you leave the comfort of your life and everything you do by default and follow me? And people had to respond. And what's important here is they knew a little about Jesus because Peter, or not, yes, Peter, and Andrew, and John, and Ze Zebedee, they were disciples of John the Baptist. And they were there when John said, look at him, the Spirit alighted on him. And then the next day, look at him. He is what we've been waiting for. So they knew that part. Jesus started his ministry, and he moved. In Matthew, there's a lot of movement. There's Mary and Joseph going from Nazareth to Bethlehem, and then being sent to Egypt and then being sent back to Nazareth to raise this child in God's way. And now Jesus is starting his ministry, and he's going to Capernaum. And that is because Matthew is written for Jewish Christians, an Old Testament reference of the promise. Naphtali, Zebulun, those were two of the houses that were given land in the promised land in Judah. This is going way back in their memory. And this is reminding them of the promise of God in Moses and in Joshua and all those that followed. In Isaiah, when he talks, when he was speaking and wrote that there would be a great light and that the people who walked in darkness would see that light, he was talking to a people who were just about to be overtaken by the Assyrian government. And Isaiah was part of the movement that allowed that to happen. Did you know that? That Israel, the southern kingdom, had gone astray, and Isaiah wanted the northern kingdom, Judah, to have nothing to do with it but to return to God. And so they made an allegiance with Assyria, and what did Assyria do? They came in and they took them over. But Isaiah said, you will have a great light. On you, God's light will shine. God is present right now. God is working through everything that is happening. And this was an Old Testament memory. And I don't know if you know this, but Galilee and Judah was like the Bible belt of the Old Testament. Did you know that? You raised your children to know the Torah. 
By the time Jesus went to the temple at 10 or 12, he had it memorized. Because that's what you do in Galilee. You go to the synagogue, you first learn about the Torah, and then you memorize it in all the other books. And they were held in contempt by the rest of the world. Well, the rest of the Jewish world, I mean, it's like the Bible Belt. None of you have any thoughts about the Bible Belt and all those people that have everything memorized. Because sometimes when you memorize it and you only pay attention to the law, your world gets smaller. And all of a sudden, Jesus starts a new ministry with exactly the same words that John the Baptist had, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. I kept looking at it and going, there's no variation. That's exactly what John said. That's a little bit odd. But he was building on that prophecy. He was building on God's word. And we see the word repent, and we make it really, really small. You repent about something bad that you've done. Repent is an action because I'm not in tune with God. Repent is me turning around. And actually here it's repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Repent, open your eyes, open your hearts, open your lives. Because God is active. And there will be light. Not repent because you're a bad person. Not repent because it's all about you, but open your life because God is active in this world. How many of you believe that? We look at the world and we go, okay, where are you, God? Repenting is not saying, God, help me be more perfect. Repenting is saying, God... I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm here for your kingdom. Repent for the kingdom of God is near. Every Sunday, we preach what? We pray what? The Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. So these disciples of John the Baptist had returned home. And in some research, it shows that disciples didn't have to do a year-long commitment. Disciples had families. Disciples sometimes were married. But they had returned home after John the Baptist was imprisoned, and Jesus found them. And he went up to them as they were making a living, as their world was turned upside down, and their world would be turned upside down every other day for the next three years and said, okay, follow me. Leave your security. Leave all of your expectations. The kingdom of God is near, and we don't have any of the answers. Follow me. And you'll find out what you need to find out. You'll learn a whole new way of interacting with God and the rest of the world. When you followed a rabbi, you knew where you were going. You knew the rabbi's tradition before you even went to learn it. But when you followed Jesus, you had no idea what was going to happen the next day. You had no idea what the next lesson would be. You had no idea what you would be asked to do. Rabbi's disciples were not asked to heal. Teach, maybe but not heal, not change the course of the world. They were looking backwards at a Torah they thought they understood and that they were very faithful to, and a God that they were very faithful to, but Jesus was looking forward to the new kingdom of God unfolding. 
and they'd be part of that journey. And then when Jesus left, they would lead that journey. And what's interesting about this is one generation always builds on the generation before it. And he chose fishers, people that worked with nets, people that worked long, strenuous nights or days, people that had to work together, people that didn't always have a catch, and said, I'll make you fishers of people. Think people are any easier to catch than fish? They were for Jesus. They learned from Jesus. He had 5,000 people show up. He had 10,000 people show up. I don't know if he threw a net out and caught some of them, but he touched their hearts. And they learned that that's what it's all about, going and touching the heart of another person through music or through coffee cafe or through being part of council, or XYZ. We follow, not just to learn, but to act. We're part of this story. We're part of God's story. And today as we go into the annual meeting, you'll see on the front of the annual meeting cover, you are part of God's story. This is your church. You've been following. You've been leading. You've been learning. You've been trusting. You filled how many communion cups? Or sung how many anthems? Or provided for how many funerals? Jesus said, Follow me, not listen to me. Follow me. And now follow me into the world. And believe God's going to make a difference. That's the hardest part. We are blessed to be a blessing. Amen.
invite you to stand as you are able. As we prepare to celebrate this holy meal, we are reminded that it is not because of an invitation of a church document or a pastor that you come to this table, but it is, it is the invitation of Christ saying, this is for you. To those of you joining us um, remotely, know that this is for you as well. Uh, I, the pastor, will commune with you at the end. You can find any simple elements in your house, some juice, some bread, a cracker, and know that God meets you with extraordinary grace in these ordinary things. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant, my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. So now gathered as God's people, we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. I invite our servers to come forward at this time. Um, we have gluten-free wafers and grape juice. If you need those things, um, the grape juice is white. The gluten-free wafers, please indicate to your server that you need that. If you wish for no one to touch your elements, we have some cups right there that you can grab and walk through the line as well. This is the table that Christ sets, and all are welcome.
Now, for those of you at home, this is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace today and forevermore. Amen. We continue by praying for our world. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Make your church one in purpose, proclaiming the message of hope, justice, love, and inclusion. Help us to work together across differences. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We rejoice at the bounty of your creation. Fill the land and sea with your abundance. Bless harvests in the southern hemisphere and fallow fields in the northern hemisphere. Equip farmers to till and keep the earth sustainable. Merciful God, receive our prayer. In Christ your reign comes near and you call us to you and a new way of living. Break the rod of the oppressor in every nation. Give strength and consolation in places of war and persecution. Grant us leaders who lift the yokes that burden those in need. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Be a stronghold for those in trouble and a rock for all who are afraid. Rouse communities to care for neighbors who need shelter, are facing maltreatment. Are, or are isolated and lonely. Be with those facing illness, chronic conditions, those who are in hospice, those who are grieving. We especially pray for Tom Griffiths and all those we name in our hearts now. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Sustain the ministries of this congregation. Nurture Vista's unique witness to your presence. Foster mutual respect. Inspire our cooperation in loving our neighbors. Bless us as we build ministry, grow as a faithful, loving community, and today look forward to our future as we hold our annual congregational meeting. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O oh God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified and risen. Amen. Amen. Our service continues by receiving an offering. Uh, do I have a couple volunteers to help? Yeah. We have two? Okay, I, you can come up here get the plates from me as the choir comes forward. I got plates. Then they won't surprise people by sneaking up from behind them. As the choir comes forward, I wanted to share with you the text of today's musical offering. Uh, since you don't have the words in the bulletin, Sia Hamba Kukanyen Kwenkos is a Zulu language from Africa that means we are marching in the light of God.
Please stand as you are able. announcements uh, for growing the ministry of Vista Lutheran. Um, we, I'm going to grab the, uh, the notes of announcements from over here. As you know, today is the annual meeting, uh, so be sure to stick around. Um, we have a very, very um, intelligently placed coffee right in the narthex, um, so, so good, good thinking. Um, so grab your coffee, stick around, uh, hear about what's going on here at Vista Lutheran. And also, you have important matters to vote on in terms of budget. You have important things to hear the current rhythm of, of being. Uh, next Sunday after the service, we do have our faith creations time. So that's a time for, for the young and the young at heart to come and make a craft that sort of supports the themes of worship. It's a short time of about half an hour of crafting. Um, so that's after the service next Sunday. February 10th, we are hosting a Red Cross blood drive. Um, they prefer registration beforehand, which can be done online. I know an e a link went out in the email. If you have any questions about that or don't have access um, to going online, please call the church office, and we can set that up for you. For you. That's February 10th. Uh, mission Team Sundays are beginning. Um, so we have a number of mission teams that are part of how we function as Vista Lutheran. Um, they're going to be explaining what that means in worship at, during the announcement times. And the first one is coming up on February the 19th. The Justice and Community Partnership team will be sharing a little bit about what they do. And then after the service, you'll be invited to experience some of what that means um, in an adult forum. Uh, so pay attention. You'll see announcements coming out about those things happening. And then on February 20th, um, that is a day off of school for many of our school districts. Um, so we're going to be hosting a little uh, afternoon uh, child care time for pre-K through 6th grade. Um, you'll see an online registration link going out. Uh, this week for that event um, But if you have questions, please contact me um, And especially if you would like to volunteer or donate um, some supplies of which we need a few So that's what's coming up here in your congregation I encourage you to if you have questions always reach out and if you have things that you think we should be um, talking about Please bring them to our attention With that I invite you to stand together as we sing our sending song, Shine, Jesus, Shine. Shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory.
May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of God, the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sanctifier. Amen. 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 So go in that peace. Experience God in your lives in unexpected ways. Be a good neighbor. Bless God's world. I will. Thanks be to God.